Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. My name is Ronnie. Hope you have a wonderful day. It's a little bit early, still dark, but here we go. In today's video, I'm going to talk about, I guess, a Q&A um, that I saw online. It was somewhat rather interesting uh, for the people who's thinking of purchasing a property. So, here are the questions. Trying to understand the borrowing process at $589 property, $60,000 deposit, broker, uh, broken down to 5% deposit, which is roughly about $29,450, stamp duty of $14,000, uh, lender's mortgage insurance of $14,000, with a total of $57,000 uh, $57, um, is the capital that you require. Mortgage calculator say, Lenders mortgage insurance can be capitalized back into the loan. Why would you do that if you have the fund to pay it and then be increasing your loan amount? The loan amount will be $560,000. Am I right in how I am thinking? Or do they want a bigger deposit and it works better to capitalize the lenders mortgage insurance? Hope it makes sense plus conveying costs, which we have separate. So, lender's mortgage insurance. If you have the fund, how do I say this? Make it nicer for you guys. So if you guys new to purchasing a property, um, if you have, let's say, um, 5% down, 10% down, under 20%, that will automatically, um, I guess trigger a lender's mortgage insurance. Now, should you pay lender's mortgage insurance if you have the capital to put 20% down? Even though you put, for this instance anyway, the capital, um, the lender's mortgage insurance is inbuilt on the loan. So, why would you want to pay an extra $14,000 of loan if you can avoid that? Now, for some, it's a good idea to get them now because you're thinking you'll never be able to pay that 20% down um, and the price keep on creeping up, let's say. It's a valid argument in a sense, but from me, I look at it because, well, if I don't have to pay an extra $14,000, that means I could save $14,000, not including, um, I guess the span, if you look at a $14,000 over 30 years, if you're getting a mortgage over 30 years, which I don't recommend to do anyway now, after doing a lot of my own, um, I guess, little experiment, my life experiment. So $14,000 over 30 years, and whatever interest rate that you're in, calculate that. Is it really worth it to get a property now, straight away, um, and paying lenders mortgage insurance? It's lenders mortgage insurance is it's an insurance to cover the bank and you're paying for it, or covering the lender, but you're the one that is paying for it. That's how I look at it. It's a fourteen thousand dollars that you could have saved up a little bit more for your own. So. I must admit, I did some. Um, I bought a property at 5%, 10%, and 20% down. Um, out of the whole entire three, which one would I go? If I do it all over again for the whole entire lot, I would say minimum 20% down. Because I don't want to pay extra. Why would you want to pay extra fluff that if you don't have to? You know, for um, it's like it, it doesn't make any sense it's like you, you're throwing away your money in a sense if you can avoid it then avoid it at all costs lenders mortgage insurance is not it's not worth it if you know that you can save up for a little bit more um, you can save up um, in the long term anyway you know in this instance it's fourteen thousand dollars it's capitalized on your loan why would you do that wait if you can save up just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Avoid it at all cost if you can. Because there's no point of having it. Um, 
I had, yeah, I had two of them, let's say, in my life. And I'll never want to do it again. If I'm going to buy it, I want to make sure that I'm going to put at least 30%. At least 30%. It's a buffer. Just in case if you need to withdraw. Just in case if, if anything happened, you can defer the repayment. And all that just in case of emergency, let's say. Even though you have an emergency fund on the side. Um, but yeah. Um, that's, how, that's how I see it when it comes to buying a property. Try not to use lenders mortgage insurance. Try to put 20% down. Um, the higher your your deposit, and let's say the shorter term that you can get, um, you know, instead of a 30 year, maybe 25 years, or maybe 20 years term um, in terms of the mortgage, then that would mean in 20 years, you would finish this mortgage, and you can do whatever you want for the rest of your life. Whereas if you have 30 year term, and if you start on your 30s, that means at about 60. If you're lucky, you polish this mortgage. Never do an interest only. Always do principal and interest. Should you fix the repayment, or should you uh, do variable? I go with fixed payment, especially if you know your weekly income. If you're on a wage, let's say, you go fix it, repayment because at least you know how much it is even if you have in a contract base um, if you can do a fixed payment because you know for sure X amount of dollars has to be paid to the bank every week every month or every whatever your, your payment cycle is to the bank I do a weekly payment it might be a little bit different for some instead of a monthly payment just doing little things like that and I do a roundup let's say your uh, repayment, let's say it's five hundred dollars per week, as an example. Oh, sorry, it'd be like four eighty-five a week and seventy-two cents. Um, so I'll round that up to five hundred dollars per week. So the round up, you'd be amazed. That it might not sound much, but hey, you know for sure is this amount of dollars that you'll be paying to the bank, um, and you know for sure um, every week you need to make this amount just to pay off the mortgage. Um, doing it a weekly psychologically it feels like you're actually paying rent every week um, that's how I feel anyway um, when I'm making the mortgage repayment um, and yeah let us mortgage insurance if you can please avoid them at any cost it's an insurance it's a it's a fluff insurance that doesn't make any sense it's an insurance that well if you can avoid it if you can save it and save it. I would rather have that $14,000 uh, pay off additional towards the the loan, let's say. Um, that's what I would do. Why would I want to pay extra if I can save money? Don't, don't get me wrong, buying a property can be exciting, especially when you're emotionally invested to the property, um, which I don't recommend uh, because this is not going to be your forever home. Especially if it's your first time buying it. It will never be a forever home. Because from my own experience, okay, so we started with buying a unit. Um, I guess when you're young, you start small, buying a unit. Then after that, you go up a grade by, let's say, a townhouse. And then from a townhouse, maybe you go upgrade again to buy a house. And then from a house, it would be, let's say, for a small family, maybe one child and a study let's say and then you upgrade again maybe you're thinking having two children and three children so you keep on upgrading and upgrading your forever home is bound to be um, exchange as you go along with your life we're living at the moment in an apartment uh, maybe I'm considering changing that <laughs> and we've been living there for quite a long time um, but it's in the middle of the city <laughs> so yeah and th that's what that's how I see things. It might be a little bit different for some. Um, you know, for some people it goes, hey, um, get it at 5% down because it's the lowest amount and it's, it's, you know, you can do a lot of things with your money. You can maybe invest it or, you know, you do other things with that capital um, if, you ha if you just put down 5%. Um, no, so that means you're lending a bucket load. If you put down a 5% deposit, that means 
you're borrowing 95%. Now, bank love, if you do borrow 95%, it's because at 95%, you owe them heaps of money and paying them every week or every month or every year for the next 30 years. Um, if you break it down alone, okay? So if, let's say, if you put down an example of, what's going on? Okay. Ready up. <laughs> so, as I was saying, let's say if you were to pay 5% down, do the same numbers, do the same interest rate, do the same um, variation, let's say, from interest only to bridge and put in interest, and then from 5% um, down to 20% down, and then do another one for, instead of a 20 years, change that, in, uh, sorry, instead of a 30 years, change it to 20 years. Do all that. You'd be amazed how much money you could save up just in those three variants. Um, now, for us, we don't believe in, um, I guess, the, what is it, the, the, uh, like the, the tax benefits, let's say. If you put down 5% uh, down, to me, it's like you still owe a lot of money. Yes, you get all of this tax deduction on paper. You make this, you make that, and you made a loss on this, and you can you know, deduct this and that. But in my head, it's like, but you still owe heaps a lot of money what happened if you don't owe any money try that try for example buying a house when you don't have any mortgage and you have rental income and that 100 percent of your income minus management fees and probably um i guess administration uh, all the profit goes to you what would happen then when you don't have any deduction so that means you've got money in your pocket money in your pocket, it means more profit in your pocket with no profit sharing with the bank. Anyway, that's just my two cents, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, guys. So, lenders, mortgage, insurance, um, avoid them at any cost if you can. Peace out. Bye.